untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Rat Sacrifice deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And in fact it won with a margin of just a single vote, so it just goes to show that every vote matters. And today's deck features a few new cards from Kaldheim, and one of the centerpieces is Immersturm Predator, a 4 mana 3 3 vampire dragon with flying, saying when the Predator becomes tapped, we can exile up to one target card from a graveyard and put a plus on plus one counter on it, and we can also sacrifice another creature at any time, and then the Predator gains indestructible until end of turn, and we also have to tap it, so by tapping the Predator with the ability we can put a plus one plus one counter on it potentially, but also if it just attacks and is declared as an attacker, that's another way of tapping the Predator and helping it grow. So the Predator is a very resilient threat that's difficult to get rid of, since we've got a bunch of sacrifice fodder in the deck to make it indestructible, and it also pairs perfectly in this red-black sacrifice deck, where we have a few effects that can steal the opponent's creatures, so we can then sacrifice them to the Predator's ability. And then another new card from Kaldheim is a Valky God of Lies, the 2 mana 2 1 legendary creature god that when it enters the battlefield reveals the opponent's hand and we can exile a creature card until Valky leaves the battlefield. And we can also spend X mana to turn Valky into the exiled creature by paying its mana cost. Or we can choose to play Tybalt Cosmic Imposter, the 7 mana 5 loyalty planeswalker that can exile opposing artifacts or creatures or the top cards of each library. And then the emblem ensures that we can still cast those exiled cards even if Tybalt leaves the battlefield, so just a very powerful planeswalker. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got some of the usual suspects in a Black Rat Sacrifice shell with Claim the Firstborn, a very cheap sorcery to gain control of an opposing creature with converted mana cost 3 or less, can untap it and it gains haste until end of turn, so we can maybe sneak in an attack and then still sacrifice it to one of our various sacrifice effects, and one of those is a Village Rite, a 1 mana instant, and as an additional cost to cast it we have to sacrifice a creature to draw 2 cards. We've got a few creatures in the deck that we don't mind sacrificing, but of course this pairs perfectly with our various Act of Treason effects. Then at 2 mana we've got a few ways of filling the graveyard. One of those is Mire Triton, a 2-1 zombie merfolk with death touch that when it enters the battlefield mills 2 cards from our library and we gain 2 life. Because we do have some graveyard synergy in this deck, Predator likes having cards in the graveyard as well as our escape cards like Croxa and at 3 mana Woestrider, so filling the graveyard is very beneficial. Then we also have 4 copies of Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, can first play it for 2 mana, making the opponent discard a card, and then later escape it out of the graveyard for 4 mana by exiling 5 other cards, and then we gain access to the 6-6 six, six Elder Giant, that when it enters the battlefield or attacks, makes the opponent discard a card, or potentially lose 3 life. Then at 3 mana we also have a singleton copy of Egon, God of Death, which we can play as a 6-6 six, six legendary creature god, with Death Touch saying at the beginning of your upkeep, exile 2 cards from your graveyard, but if you cannot we have to sacrifice Egon and draw a card, so it can potentially give us access to a pretty large creature, especially nice against the various mill decks that are actively putting cards in our graveyard. Or we can play Throne of Death for 1 mana, a legendary artifact saying at the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card, so this can help us fuel our graveyard for various graveyard synergies, and for Twin and Black we can tap the throne and exile a creature card from our graveyard to draw a card, so this can be nice in the more grindy matchups. Then we also have the full playset of Timurit Calls the Dead as another nice way to fill the graveyard. On the first and second chapters of the saga, we mill three cards and then we may exile a creature or enchantment card from our graveyard to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, so this is perfect sacrifice fodder for our Immersturm Predator. And then on the final chapter we gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies we control, so that also pairs nicely with our Mire Triton. And then we've got the full playset of Woestrider, a 3 mana 3 2 horror that is joined by an 0 1 goat token when it enters the battlefield, and we can sacrifice another creature at any point to scry 1, so we can sacrifice the goat token maybe after chum blocking to get the scry 1 effect, but it also provides a nice goat token that we can sacrifice to our other sacrifice effects like village rights or Immerstorm Predator, and then we can also escape Woestrider from the graveyard for 5 mana by exiling 4 other cards, and then it enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and of course 
course, having that sacrifice effect pairs quite nicely with our various steel effects like a Crone War and Claim the Firstborn. Then we've got two copies of Bone Crusher Giant, can first use the Stomp Adventure dealing 2 damage, and then play the 4 3 creature afterwards, and then topping off our curve are four copies of Immerstorm Predator and three copies of the Crone War, which on the first chapter gains control of target creature as long as the Crone War remains on the battlefield. On the second chapter, until our next turn, creatures or opponents control attack each combat if able, which potentially forces some disastrous attacks for the opponent, and on the final chapter, each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. And then going over the mana base, we also have two copies of Castle Lochthwain as a nice card draw engine in a late game, seven swamps, five mountains, alongside four copies of Fable Passage, which puts an extra card in Graveyard for our various escape creatures. And we also finally got access to the Black Rat Pathway, and finally two copies of Temple of Malice to round out the deck. And in the sideboard, we also get to free roll Jagantha the Wellspring as our companion. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Meyer Triton to fill the graveyard for Croxa. Claim to go with Predator. Don't need more lands here. We'll be fine with four. Opponent on red whites and say Cargan Intimidator. So maybe an aggro deck or maybe a warrior tribal here. So it should be a reasonable matchup for our various claim the firstborn type effects. Just need to make sure that the predator survives, so we have a way to sacrifice those creatures afterwards. All right, a war leader, opponent passes. So yeah, don't mind playing Valky to have a look. And two Haktos and Winota, so. These are both human, although Intimidator can turn a human into a coward, which can then potentially enable Winota, so that's a concern, but Haktos could potentially be a much bigger problem since we can't really interact with it all that well, and we're missing some mana costs on our blockers. So I think we choose Haktos. And then... We'll pass... Next turn, most likely, just play Predator. Opponent sends both. And they might turn Triton into a coward. Yep. So, can't really block Intimidator since they can just give it plus one plus one. So, we'll take it. Could also play a Crone War here. Strider's also great, so I could go Strider Claim. A lot of great options. Uh, what do we prefer? Maybe getting rid of Intimidator to prevent the Winota shenanigans is better. So we'll uh, fetch up. Swamp is fine. Claim Intimidator, I think. Triton's a coward. And then we'll attack with these two. And another claim seems great. So this is kind of the perfect matchup for all these sacrifice effects. A creature deck that doesn't have a ton of removal to take out our sacrifice enablers. Right, Hazard kills Valky, so we'll sacrifice it so it doesn't get exiled. And we'll still keep claim on top. Now we have a 2-drop and a 3-drop and a 4-drop coming up, so we should be able to combat the Unscarred here. So there's Hactos. Rolled a 3, so we 
pretty much have to block it with Strider. So Strider will go away. Do I want to play a Predator in the meantime? Do we want to attack the opponent's hand with Croxa? Doesn't seem very mana efficient, so I think Predator is the way to go. Actos is forced to attack, hopefully they don't have like a Mall of the Skyclaves, which could technically equip Haktos here. Showdown's a good one. Hits two lands, Amber Cleave and Warleader, although they can't Amber Cleave Haktos at least. So that's forced to attack. I'm happy with the trade. God of Death, how many cards in Graveyard? Six. Probably still better off playing it as a Throne of Death. And then for now, we could Croxa, Throne and Claim. That seems pretty efficient. So we'll attack. And the opponent concedes. Yeah, pretty back-breaking when you get to steal multiple creatures and sacrifice them onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems fine. Got a nice curve, Croxa pairs well with Timurt Calls the Dead to fill the graveyard. Bit of interaction with Stomp, and then we can maybe wait to play Tybalt, so. or maybe at some point sneak Valky into our curve. But for now, Croxa seems fine. Facing blue-red. They might have an opt in hand. Which they might cast in response here. Gets rid of a planes. I might have cast opt in response to Croxa just to have more information before deciding what to discard. Uh -huh, so a point on just straight up blue rats beat down with Sprite Dragon. Well, it's a nice claim the firstborn target. Although we are currently missing a way to sacrifice it afterwards. For now, I could play Timurt Calls the Dead. I could just stomp Sprite Dragon before it gets out of hand. Yeah, I think I'll just stomp it now. There's just too much risk with not doing this and having the opponents turn it into a 3-3. And then we'll regret it. Put on cycles. Another Croxa. Now is probably a good time for Timurt Calls the Dead. And I guess we might as well play land first. On the off chance that they have a Jory Disruption, but I doubt it. And then, I guess one Croxa can go. Make a zombie. Still missing double black. But we do have a, a lot of black sources in the deck we can draw into. Alright, Riddle Form is going to be a little tricky to get rid of, since it's an enchantment during our turn. So, for now, probably just play Bone Crusher. And then hope to draw another Swamp soon. Although we can also keep it on top with a Scry, if our zombie's still there. A Royal Eruption kills Bone Crusher at the cost of two life. Animates Riddle Form, and we'll take three. Predator is probably too good to pass up here, although I really want another Black Source. I guess we'll just keep it on top and then play Triton to mill it. And that puts an extra creature in Graveyard, which is 
better than a non-creature. And then we'll still have Stomp available. Alright, sadly mill the Swamp as well. So we're not particularly close to casting Tybalt, but we've got a lot of ways to spend our mana with all these escape creatures in the graveyard. Bone's also splashing a bit of white. Riddle form is turned on. And we'll take three. Could stomp the opponent's face just to be mana efficient. I think I'm gonna keep it in case we can combine it with another damage effect to maybe take out that riddle form. And then just play Strider. Can claim Bone Crusher and then sacrifice it. And scry towards Swamp. Temple of Malice, is that good enough? I'm gonna say no. And then I can scry again by sacking the goat. Another eruption takes out Strider, but not before we take another look here. Predator. They're making it tempting. Predator could potentially block that riddle form. Alright, fine. Can potentially sacrifice a zombie if they try to kill it. And we're presenting lethal here, so. Doing hate our spots, still have a bone crusher in hand. Croxa can represent more damage. So despite not finding double black, we're still doing okay. Borber is a decent answer here though. Turns on riddle form and bounces our four mana dragon. At least they don't have double blue to play it end of turn. Alright, so now we can maybe more effectively double spell. Or I can just uh, get Croxa out of the graveyard. Let's start by attacking. So if Croxa makes them lose three, they would just die. So we can potentially win that way. And making them discard cards also makes it less likely that they can animate Riddle form and kill me. So I think just play Croxa normally. See what they do. They might have been sandbagging some cards to discard, but lands don't work since they still take three. Alright, they had a miscast in hand, and then stomping them to one doesn't make a huge difference. I think we just cast a giant here. Could also cast Valky, although I can't really think of a scenario where that would be incredibly useful. And then next turn I can potentially escape Croxa for the win. 
Alright, and our opponent explodes. So pretty grindy game here against Jeskai Tempo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Could use a sacrifice effect to go with our two act of treason effects. For now we'll fetch a mountain facing Gigalta, so it could be the mirror match. Never mind, base camp. And then I don't mind playing Valky on curve. And then Timur calls the dance, means we can maybe play Egon here. So we're putting on a Naya party deck. So we know it's definitely the scariest card, although they might struggle to get a ton of triggers if we take away the Juru Paragon, which is also important for filling the opponent's party. Next turn they can play double Arch Priests, but then they don't have a great follow up. I'll take Paragon. Let's play Timurets. Hope to mill a creature, which we did not, so we don't get a zombie, unfortunately. Although, still fine to play Egon here. Take two. And our opponent puts Gigantha in hand, which is not a very exciting turn three play. Alright, there's all our creatures at. So... Can even escape Croxa here if we want. I guess that's not bad. Hit for two, and then Croxa can attack the opponent's hand, as well as their life total. There's an argument for instead escaping Strider since we have all these Act of Treason effects, but I think this is fine. Squad Commander makes a few tokens, and there's War Strider. That's perfect. So, what do we want to steal here? Opponent's got Warrior and Cleric. It's mostly Winota that's the issue with all these Warrior tokens. So we might want to consider stealing one of them. Yeah, let's claim a token. And then Strider. Attack. And then we're fine with a trade here if they want to triple block. Since we just want to minimize the impact Winota has. And then Castle is probably fine. The next one we can a Crone War and Claim. So we'll have to wait and see here. Winota could potentially hit two big creatures. Archpriest, just a human, so that's fine. Alright, toss three. Alright, and a veteran adventure, so two pretty good hits. So, I don't want to trade away my Woe Strider just yet. But I do want to block probably a token. I'm okay trading Valky for Archpriest, and then we can chump. A 5 5 and sacrifice. This seems okay. And then we'll still keep line on top. And then a Crone War. 
can steal one creature. Question is which one? Can I guarantee lethal here? Eight plus three is eleven, so I guess stealing we know that will do it. But I could also steal the Archpriest for what it's worth. Get some Winota triggers of our own. Always fun. Ah, our opponent concedes before we can have our own fun with Winota. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand if we can claim and village right a creature early on, that is. Temple will be looking for an extra land. And passage is probably good enough. So turn to Croxa and then probably claim a creature first chance we get. Opponent gets rid of a Black Lance Paragon, so maybe Mono Black Aggro here. Opponent passes with two mana up, so they might have another Black Lance which we can stomp end of turn. I'll just do it now. And I'll just fetch. Mountain should be fine here. Could have kept the Paragon in play to then claim and village rights, but we're probably not going to find many better targets for Stomp. And a Scavenger is quite juicy here. Just want to hit my land drops, so... Attack while we can. Alright. And then next turn, we're getting close to escaping Croxa. Another scavenger. Alright. Already a 5-3, although it's gonna shrink once we escape. Alrighty. So claim plus Woe Strider looks good. Maybe should have fetched a mountain, so we had the option of maybe claiming and escaping Croxa. So now we've got Strider to go with our two Act of Treason effects. Although Crawling Barons is more difficult to interact with. So, yeah, we'll untap. I can attack, escape Croxa. Seems fine. Don't have to attack with a Strider in case of another Paragon. Might not be the best trade when we have these two cards in hand. So I'll just escape here. See if they have a response. Ah, murder Strider to Strider. Timurt calls it that, can fill the graveyard more for the second escape attempt. Alright, E to Extinction, great answer to Croxa here. And they do have Castle Lochthwain to refuel, so the game's far from over. Alright, land's not the worst, means I can Play Timurt calls it dead and Bone Crusher. Probably still worth it to make a zombie here, although it doesn't line up great against Rider. And every single card in Graveyard matters when we have this many escaped creatures. So it's actually interesting. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm declining. And then just playing a giant. And then we're pretty close to another escape. Alright, now I can probably afford to make a zombie. 
and then Strider plus Claim could be good, or we can just go for another Croxa. Let's go with Strider. Could see another Black Lance Paragon, perhaps. Yep. So that's gonna trade for Bone Crusher. And do we want another Strider? Yeah, I don't mind it. Yeah, maybe in hindsight I should have probably just made the zombie on the first chapter of Timurt Calls the Dead. Would have represented two extra damage last turn. Maybe got a bit too fancy trying to keep cards in Graveyard, since we still had the second chapter of Timurt Calls the Dead. Uh, probably no need to scry again. Mm, do I want another Strider? Sure. This turn I can play one and activate Castle. And still have an Acrone War, which is quite powerful here. Opponent down to 13. Probably should have been 11. Don't want to scry now. Probably doesn't hurt. Land can go. I'll sacrifice one more, but I do want to keep some fodder in play in case we find an Immersturm Predator. Triton seems good since we have all these escape creatures we can get back. So, let's see. If I play Triton, I can escape. So that's probably the play here. Another E to Extinction. This time we can sacrifice a response to deny the ability on E to Extinction and to put our crocs on the graveyard. Village Rites is excellent. Can also sacrifice a goat with it. Put on discards their last card. We hit for five. And this game seems almost over here. Put on passes. Play an insurance strider here. Attack might see Crawling Baron's trade for strider, which is fine. Opponent takes four. At this point, how do we lose? Maybe opponent has some sort of sweeper effect. Um, could also put Giganta in hand, cast Village Rites. Sure. Keep the Village Rites in hand, maybe could have main phased it, since we hadn't played land for the turn yet. Castle down to two, and that's game. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. This might be a game where we wait until turn three to play Croxa so we can sacrifice it to village rights. Ooh, Soul Guide Lantern. It's pretty effective at stopping my escape synergies. So snow-covered planes, maybe some sort of controlling snow deck. Opponent foretells. 
I mean, I can play another Croxa since we have a second copy. Although, then they'll both probably get exiled by the Lantern. Eh, I'll still uh, play Croxa here to be mana efficient. Gets rid of a Starnheim Unleashed. So it looks like a blue-white control snow deck. Alright, so gonna go full control for this trick to work properly, I think. Play Croxa. And in response to the trigger. We can play our village rights. Opponent's gonna be hold first. So hopefully our opponent presents a few targets for these steel effects, which we can then combine with our village rights and predator. Probably want to wait until we have an extra creature in play before playing Predator, so they cannot destroy it easily. Doesn't seem like a game where we're gonna get to escape Croxa. It does feel bad to play Triton, knowing that they can then exile my graveyard afterwards. But the alternative is playing a Predator, which will then die to a Doomscar without being able to make it indestructible. So that feels pretty bad too. So I think it's still Triton here. And then we'll pass. So next turn I could easily escape a Croxa if I wanted to. But they can just sacrifice Lantern without paying any extra mana to exile our graveyard. Still nothing. Alright, let's attack with Triton. Opponent takes it. Play Predator, keeping up Village Rights. Ah, gets countered, fair enough. So, opponent will have to exile my graveyard, otherwise next turn I can escape Croxa before they get a chance to use Lantern. Minor Triton, probably want to use our Village Rights here, or we can keep it to go with our claim, since we currently don't have another Sacrifice effect. And then now they'll exile my graveyard including Mire Triton. So we'll have to rebuild with a second one. We do also have Gigantha as another threat. So no need to panic just yet. So if they at some points cast a Starnheim Unleashed, making a few angels, we can steal those with Claim the Firstborn, since they have zero converted mana cost. And the Chrome War can steal another one. Shark Typhoon also fine targets. Opponent foretells two cards, so they might have another counter spell here. which would probably counter my village rights as opposed to my steel effect. So we can potentially bait out a counter spell by playing Gigantha. And then still go claim plus village rights on the shark and keep the cards flowing. Although they might also have a Doomscar, in which case they're fine wiping the board. And then I'll have to decide again whether it's worth it or not to 
Villatrites or keep it with a Crown War and Claim. Although now that we have a Strider in the graveyard that we can escape, I would probably be fine casting the Village Rites. Behold, gonna draw more cards. So close game. Could still go either way. Another card foretold. Make that two. One of them could be a Cosmos Charger if they have this many foretell cards. They could have Epiphany to take an extra turn. They could have Starnheim Unleashed, Counter Spells, Doomscar Sweepers. So there's a lot of options. Ooh. Well, that's a card we want to resolve. We can also use Gigantha for mana here, potentially. So what if I claim Shark? Attack with Triton and Shark. And then Village Rites, they might counter the Village Rites, and then we cast Valky thanks to Gigantha. Don't hate that idea. Alright, they're just gonna negate this. Perfect. In that case, I probably attack with Triton. Could also Crone War, to be honest, which would be pretty effective. And then just smash for seven. What's better, Valky or damage? Can they easily get rid of a Planeswalker once it's resolved? Not really. So... Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the Valky line. Or Tybalt, I should say. Opponent trades. So now we can safely plus the bolts. Alright. Oh, so many painful memories. Opponent's gonna start pressuring us by making some angels, perhaps, and then we've got a crone war to steal one of them. Gravenlore, also an excellent one here. So that's their snow payoff, and the reason why they're playing all these snow basics. Alright. So how about... This turn we can a Crone War plus Predator. I don't hate plussing. Opponent's hand is empty, both of these cards are in exile. And then a Crone War. Steal one of the angels. And then cast Predator with Gigantha. And then I wonder, I guess we can use the Gigantha mana for Croxa too, which is kind of neat. Could have sacrificed it to Predator, but I want it back as a blocker. And then we'll just pass. These can block the Angels. So I'm fine with double trade. Another Starnheim Unleashed. Six cards in Graveyard. So our opponent's creatures are forced to attack next turn. And we can ultimate here, which seems pretty good. I guess I probably shouldn't have exiled their Starnheim Unleashed with uh, Predator because of Tybalt's ult. But I think we'll be fine here. So, Embarrassment of Riches, too many cards to choose from. So I can play Strider. 
And then claim the firstborn. An angel. And then... What else do we want to do? Maybe should have hard cast a Shark Typhoon before. Yeah, I guess we'll do it now. Also have negate to counter the opponent's counter spells for what it's worth. Although I guess I'm one mana short now. Yeah, just an overload of options here. Definitely not playing optimally, but that's okay. Attack. Point is at one. And can I kill them somehow? I guess we'll pass and kill them next turn. Can just stomp their face with negate backup. That'll do it. But yeah, just to show you what happens if we cast this, there's no option to foretell it out of exile with Tibalt. Opponents with a miscast. You know what? I'm gonna negate it. Just because I can. Alright, so we got to see Tybalt ultimate, got to see Predator do its thing, so definitely an achievement unlocked type of game. So yeah, overall, a red-black sacrifice, a solid deck and standard. It's gonna shine against creature decks as opposed to control decks, but against control decks that still have a few creatures as win conditions, especially tokens like we just saw, we can still potentially leverage or claim the Firstborn and the Crone War to good effect. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.